Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Aziz Drives. Today we're presenting our first car in 2024 and it's this 5 Series. And it's not just any 5 Series, it's the top model of the range i5. So this means we have the M60 xDrive. Before we start the review, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, Let's begin with the design. A lot of people say it doesn't look very good. It looks like a Skoda Octavia, but I wouldn't agree. I say it looks very nice. I really do think this is a beautiful design because the F10 and the F90 of the previous generation 5 series, they kind of look the same. It was just an evolution, a little bit of a facelift. This is something completely else. And it reminds me a little bit of the evolution from the E39 to the E60 because the E60 was something completely different. And again, BMW really has, really has balls and presents cars that look different than the previous generation. And I personally like the look, especially when you look at the new headlight design with the shadow line and the new LED style there with blue elements inside. Then of course, this iconic grill with a glow going around the grill. Very, very nice, kind of connecting it. It's just a nice look. This part here, for example, the power domes with the integrated BMW logo in the middle of them kind of reminds me of the XM. Very brutal, very interesting, but they, they stay true to the homage BMW. You know, the two grills, it doesn't need the grills anymore. It's electric, so it doesn't have to cool the engine, but still they present it so that you know unmistakably this is a BMW. And talking about the engine, it's going to have also a petrol engine version and of course the M5 with the hybrid. So that is very good. And the V8, don't forget it. Here in the front, we have some openings there, of course, to put the car down, more downforce, more performance. Since this is the M60, we're talking about a lot of performance, man. 601 horsepower and 780 newton meters of torque. When you press the boost option, you get 820 newton meters. And accelerating this car from zero to 100, in 3.8 seconds. That's very impressive for a car weighing in at 2,380 kilograms. It's pretty long. It's around five meters and one centimeters long. So that is very good. And of course, the tire to tire distance is three meters, which means it's a very nice car to glide on the Autobahn. Very beautiful. Then side design. You see those winter tires, those are not the aerodynamic tires that they offer in the base package of the car. The 5 Series has very beautiful design wheels. Those are just the winter tires, so they're not very special. And then they don't have anything interesting like aerodynamic force that puts the air around so you don't have that much drag. But they look okay. We have, of course, the seeming less integrated new BMW door handles that are integrated into the door. Very nice. And it's a 5 Series. It stayed a 5 Series. No fancy, whatever, no fancy forms, no fancy anything. It just is a 5 Series. And I like that. I like that because I love the 5 Series since the first car. It's always kind of the same, just new. So uh, at the back, I really like the look of the back. It reminds me a little bit of the uh, F90. It's a pretty beautiful car, it really is. I mean, the 5 Series is always very nice and you would never think that this car has so much power. At the back, we have to talk about trunk space, of course. 490 liters of volume, just as it is. So that is, yeah, that's okay. That's not too good, that's not too bad. The engine sits right here and one engine at the front. As I said, 2.3 tons, but it has almost a perfect 50-50 weight distribution which is great for driving. So we have to talk about a little bit something else. So come to this side. This is the electric version. And I don't like the fact that they just let this charging port at the position where the normal petrol tank would be. It's really not necessary in my opinion. You could have done it, for example, like your competitor Audi and put it at a better place at the front or on the both sides so you can charge wherever you want. When I'm charging a car, it shouldn't be that complicated. I have to place it, I have to park it right in reverse so I can put the charging port in. Talking about charging capacity, here you see you have the quick charging option, which means you can charge the car up with 205 kilowatts per hour capacity. That means the car can charge up pretty fast in around 30 minutes with full boost and the battery capacity is 82 kilowatt hours. 
So that is not that bad. The range that they give us is around 480 to 550 kilometers. WLTP, I tested it at three degrees. And I can tell you, they say it's going to use around 18.2 to 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I drove at 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So it's right there. When you calculate that to cost, for example, to efficiency compared to a petrol engine car, and also what I paid for one kilowatt hour, which is 50 cents in Switzerland, so 50 rappen, 50 rappen, it would be like 4.4 liters or six liters, depending on the price of the kilowatt hours where you're charging. So um, that's not bad. That's really not that bad. I don't know of a car with 600 horsepower that can use 6.6 .6 liters. So this is really not that bad. So again, I have to pop the hood and here comes something very annoying about the BMW 5 Series. You know, I was pissed off in 2024 already by a Mercedes and now I have to get pissed off about this BMW. So come on, man, what the fuck is this? You know, again, look at that. Look at that. At least it's hard plastic, but what is that? What is that crap here anyway? Come on, I mean, in all honesty, why would you put it there? I mean, every other car has a frunk nowadays. Just give me like 50 liters or something to pack some stuff in the front. That's really, really terrible design. It really is, just put this in and that's it. The interior has come a long way and we have a lot of change because this is the latest generation. They bring out the 7 Series, then they bring out the 5 Series, which has the same type of new interior design. So you will find a bunch of new stuff. For example, the whole mask you see, the whole dashboard is redone. So you have those big screens, you have the very nice carbon fiber here and you have some material that is called Sensatec. So the Sensatec is an imitation of leather that they use nowadays in the interior. It is here on the seat, on the dashboard, also on the side of the door, and it pretty much looks like leather. It does look like leather, but however, when you touch it, you can tell it has a different texture than leather. It's not that soft. It's not that beautiful to to experience on the finger. It has a rougher surface and I'm not really a fan of those materials because I always come to think how much resources did they actually use to produce the material, really? Is it really that sustainable? I mean, what are you going to do with those things after they have worn out? And especially that is the case. What is going to happen after 10 years of that? We don't have any reference point nowadays. So we'll see that in the future. That's as far as we can talk about the materials that they used here. No Alcantara for the top, but you can of course configure everything. The car we have here today is a very basic configuration. We have the black pack here, we have the carbon fiber here, that is cool. We have the ambiental light, which is standard on every single car. You can change it, it has this 3D and prism effect, which looks very beautiful. My absolute favorite about the interior and the new style is the beautiful steering wheel. I really, really do like it. It has a very nice form, it looks very cool, it feels great on the hand, it has a very nice thickness. The M stitchings, of course, and they didn't just leave the pedals here, you just have one pedal, which is called Boost, to give you and activate 820 newton meters if you have to do an overtaking maneuver, which is very, very nice. And I also like the resolution of, this, of the screens and how you feel in general while sitting in the seat. It has a very nice new pattern, fully electric seats, of course, just feels very beautiful. The driving experience is very nice. Since you have the head-up display and everything is helping you out. It's really a driver-oriented car and BMW has stayed true to themselves. What I like to do now is to talk about the luggage compartment or in general storage compartment and then we'll go into the infotainment system. So you have your basic armrest here with a little bit of storage compartment and the 12 volt battery charger, two USB ports at the front and of course cup holders. You have also a wireless charging port at the front and then I also like the design for example of the door handles they're very beautiful look at that very nice integrated into the door the whole design is it's really beautiful you have some upgrades you can have with a better optioned car for example the Burmester sound system which i would advise you to go to and of course 
the crystal here, for example. So you would have a crystal gear knob, a crystal for your iDrive controls and a crystal thing. Maybe you have seen it in the 7 series. If not, check out the link in the description. A crystal volume adjustment. So very, very cool. And also you can get a panoramic roof and glass roof, double glass and all of that. It's very, very... You have a bunch of stuff you could do with this car. As I said, it's very basic, this one. So the starting price is around 100,000. How this is configured, it's 130,000, but you can upscale it to 150,000. You have your quick connections here, for example, the menu or your home screen or your phone, for example, that you can go to and the climate control. What has changed dramatically is the climate control. It's not that complicated anymore. It's very simple, actually. You have physical movements here that are moving the air vents that are integrated into this part here, for example and you can steer them via the screen. It's very, very simple. Synchronize it, auto, where do you want to focus? You can choose whatever you want, for example. And we just put it into auto, it does it the best, especially on electric car. When you put it into efficiency mode, it's going to change. So that is very, very good. And you also have touch screens here to adjust how much you actually want it to blow. So that is great. It has been decomplicated, which I like a lot. If you want to, for example, cool your seats or heat your seat, you just press on the seat button or you press this little button on the left side here and you can do the adjustments and the seat controls from there. So that is also very good. Press here and cool the seat, for example. We have, of course, integrated heated steering wheel. Just press the button, it saves it and that's it. Very simple, very, very good. When you're driving this car, for example, on the German Autobahn, you can start watching TV. You can listen to music, of course, or you can start to game. So let me show you that. It's called, let me search it, Air Console Games. So you just take your phone, then you go into the camera like this, all right? And then you just scan this QR code. You will be connected, just tap in your name, Aziz Drives, for example. I'll show you right now on the screen. And now it connects my phone to the screen. This is what we can do now. Check this out. Two, one, go. All right. I'm at the first place because I was before. Collect the money, break heart, break heart. This is my... This is my style. I break hard, I let them pass, and now I shoot them all up. Rocket launcher, baby. Ba 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 ba. Get them, get them, get them. <laughs> imagine, imagine you're doing this while you're driving. It's unimaginable, but it is actually possible. And I think you got the message, but I have to just uh, destroy one further car. Ba, 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 ba. That's it, man. That's it. You're a goner. You saw that? And when you don't want to play, just close it here and go outside. That's it. So you've seen, they did quite a bit of change. You also have an interior camera. You have so much stuff. You really have so much stuff. We could talk an hour just about the iDrive system. We are at the back of the 5 Series. As you can see, we have pretty much plenty of space for the knee, also for the head. The look is very nice, actually. It feels nice. Also, the seats are very comfortable. We have an armrest, of course, with two cup holders that are very, very basic and actually really not good. And then we have another opening here to put your she through, which is great. But what I like most is we have the travel pack. For example, you can add an extra screen here and let your children watch it and charge it via USB-C. We have touch screen for the climate controls here. The back seats are also heated and we have two USB-C ports there. And then also a charging port or a, a, a storage compartment for your phone, for example, here, so it doesn't slide off. Two physical air vents and also air vents on the side, on the B pillar of the door. We have the Harman Kardon uh, sound system. Again, I would advise you to take the Bauer Wilkins sound system because it's really that much better. In the front we have a black part Harman Kardon and in the back they just added this massive silver panel here that I think looks very ugly in the back. 
And that's as far as we can take it with the BMW 5 Series. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment what you think we could do better. Help us out a little bit. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one. Goodbye.